Welcome to Ghostly. Is the Queen Mary haunted? Ghostly is a podcast that comes out every other week. In each episode, we take a ghost story or paranormal event and look into its complete history. Rebecca then gives us evidence proving that the story is real. And my job is to debate those pieces of evidence and get you, the listener, prepared to vote on if it's real or not. If you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button. And as always, we're your host. I'm Pat. And I'm Rebecca. So hey, what's going on? I was going to ask you. Oh, well, I asked you first. Well, I don't know. It's the weather's getting better. Yeah. I feel really boring right now. Okay. It's been, I've been busy at work and <laughs> yeah. life and uh, feels busy, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to start planting flowers soon. There you go. There's wow. my what's been going on. All right. Non ghostly related. <laughs> if anyone has any um, gardening tips. Oh, I, we could do Rebecca's garden show. I I I don't know if that would sell. I'm oh. sorry. Well, it was just a, I don't know. And if, if you have anything, <laughs> Rebecca at ghostlypodcast.com. I'm always open to it. Kind of newer to the gardening thing. Yeah. But uh how about you, Pat? What's going on? Absolutely nothing. What? Yeah. It's been, you know, a boring but yet nice couple of weeks. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah. So let's get right on into the episode. We do have some shout out, or we do have one shout out at least. Uh, there are two ways to get a shout out on Ghostly. The first way is to give us a review on Apple Podcast. We always prefer the five star ratings, right? Of course. Um, but we will read any and all reviews that we receive. We did not receive any this last time. Yeah, I mean, we get ratings, but we need those reviews. Absolutely. Oh. And the second way is to either buy us a coffee on buymeacoffee.com slash ghostlypodcast or by going to our website, ghostlypodcast.com and hitting the buy us a coffee button in the menu. Or you could even become a member on Buy Me a Coffee for Ghostly. We're still working out all the details right now. You would find out what the episodes that we have planned are. Yeah. Uh, which there's some really exciting ones coming up. So excited. <laughs> Absolutely. So we have a buy me a coffee from Brian Thompson. Yeah, thanks, Brian. And uh, Brian also sent us a really good ghost story. Oh, wait, he's a believer? Uh, I oh. think he's a, I don't know. He might have said <laughs> Team Skeptic in there. I have to read it again. But I'm very excited. Uh, Brian, we got you on the list. You're coming up. Um, so All right. thank you. All right, well, let's get right to the listener mail then. Yeah, um, you know, I've been getting some getting some more stories. I love it. Keep sending them. Uh, and I apologize if you if you sent in a story we haven't gotten to yours yet. I promise they are all in the queue. Um, uh, but please keep sending them. I, yeah, I, we need more. We need more. There's never enough. Uh, okay, so this one is from listener Carol. All right. Thank uh, you, Carol. Yeah, thank you, Carol. So she says, hello, I just stumbled across your podcast today. And I'm working through it from the first episode to the recent episodes. Oh, that's the way to do it, right? Right? Yeah. Then you uh, get all the inside jokes. Then, yeah, it, too. Right. Exactly. If you go from like the most recent to the least recent, you wouldn't get the inside jokes then. Right. You'd be like, what the heck are they talking about? Yeah, exactly. It'd take exactly. you forever. Right. Uh, I'm currently listening to the Shadow People episode. Ah, oh, that was a good one. That was a good one. When I was six, I would wake up in the night scared. I don't know what woke me or why I was scared. Of course, we went through the banging on the wall, calling for my parents who were not thrilled. This went on for a bit until I was told to not ever wake them again. <laughs> <laughs> wow. They, I'm sure they usually, a lot of parents uh, can, but they, can relate to that. They should put something to the end of that, unless the house is on fire or somebody's or, getting killed or something. Exactly. But uh, yeah. all right. Just never, never wake them <laughs> Just, up. Nope. <laughs> all right. Then she continues. I will always remember waking up, not being able to hit the wall <laughs> and looking into the hallway. Standing in my doorway was a figure of a man. It was all black and not moving. Man I, in black. Shadow people. Mm. Was I, it man in black from Westworld? Well, yes. Also, you know, a movie with Will Smith. <laughs> yeah. That's men in, <laughs> men black. in black. That's yeah, several that's men. But yes, the man in black. Yes, that's true. Okay. Uh, I can close my eyes and to this day I can still see it. I'm now 55. What it was, I have no idea. 
Since I did not call for my parents, I know it wasn't my dad. I did the only thing I could do. I hid under my blankets. Yeah, like that would stop anything. I'm not sure what my beliefs really are. I've had experiences I cannot explain. But at the same time, I can, can't can accept that ghosts are constantly around. That's awesome. <laughs> Maybe upon dying, a person has a chance for one last visit before they move on. But to stay, question mark, I guess time will tell whether I believe that or not. Wow. There you go. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's something to, to have. So I, I've noticed, you know, some people when they see things as children, We'll say, you know, they can remember that vividly going forward uh, into adulthood. So um, we appreciate you sharing that with us. And if you want to share any of your other stories with us, feel free to send us an email with more. At info at ghostlypodcast.com. You know, uh, they always say, though, that children are more um, susceptible to the paranormal. Open to? Open, maybe. Yeah, I don't. I don't know exactly the wordage for that. Yeah, but yeah. That's and true. also, uh, if you would like to, you can actually mail us something in the mail. You know, with a stamp on it. Yeah, we like that. Yeah, and that's PO Box number two six four, Geneva, Illinois six zero one three four. Absolutely, and we're out on all those social medias too: Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Yeah. You can find us there, Ghostly Podcast. Send us a message. Absolutely. Carry your pigeon. Smoke signal. Whatever whatever you got. Yeah. We'll no, okay. All right. Well, by the way, thank you, Carol. Thank you so much for sending that in. That was nice. And I like that you are open minded, but yet still question. I like it. Uh okay. So I know that the polls are gonna be awful from this last one. I, I just know it. So why don't you rip the band aid off? And get this over wow, with. Wow, you're not trying to skip them this time? Just get it over with. Oh. Let's just not even talk I mean, about but it. Let's I mean, just like, do it. What do you so think? we talked about Drury Lane in the last episode, right? <laughs> and we what were, did. What, what were the results? We did. We talked about the Royal Theater Drury Lane right. in London, England. We, yes, that was it. And, and okay, uh, okay, the, here the goes. yeses were 66.7%. Uh, oh, no. And the noes were 333 Oh. That one, it's pretty haunted. We were doing so well with almost being tied for like the longest time. Yeah, well, we're getting into some real spooky uh, stuff. <laughs> uh, this episode's going to be spooky too. Yeah, well, I but mean- But I think I got you beat on this one. Uh, we're going to talk about that. Okay. But I think I got you beat. I think I figured it all out. Okay, I, all right. we'll see. So we have a couple of ship episodes, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, we did the Eastland disaster first. Yep. And then we did Titanic. Yes. Both of those catastrophic losses on those ships, both of those have these enormous ghost stories. I believe I lost both of those. (laughs) (laughs) But anyways, uh, I think it's time that we talk about a ship that in 2008 made Time Magazine's top 10 haunted places list. Nice. Nice. So this may be one of the most documented as haunted episodes we've ever done. I think that's what you were saying to me, right? The amount of evidence of hauntings out there for this um, this ship is staggering. Yeah. And the ship is uh, the RMS Queen Mary or the HMS Queen Mary, depending upon how you look at things. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. Um, But let's just go to the ghost story. Okay, yeah, let's let's get spooky. It's time for a spooky tale from Rebecca. Okay, so here's our ghost story for today. Marcus and I just came back from the most amazing wedding and honeymoon anyone could ask for. But there's one thing that happened that I just can't get out of my head. Marcus tells me, Tanya, just forget about it. Nobody's going to believe us. But I can't. And I want to write about it now before I forget the details. For our wedding night, we decided to stay at the famous Queen Mary Hotel 
It's so amazing because it's an old luxury liner that's moored in Long Beach. We stayed in one of the first class cabins and it was so beautiful. We walked about on the deck and and had spectacular views. We drank, we even watched fireworks. It couldn't have been more perfect. The room itself was nice until it wasn't. In the middle of the night, we were awoken by something. I, I'm I'm guessing a noise. And we saw a tall, ghostly looking sailor just standing by the locked door of an adjoining room. Not our room, an adjoining room. He just stared at us. He wasn't necessarily threatening looking, but definitely creepy. And I mean, why is there a stranger in our room? We could hear loud music and people talking in that adjacent room. Marcus told him, hey, you are in the wrong room. You need to go back. He just turned and left without a word. We thought, well, I guess he just wandered in the wrong room. Marcus even went to check and the door was locked. But it was the middle of the night and we were flying out the next day to Hawaii. So we went back to sleep. An hour later, though, the same thing happened. We were both woken up and saw him again. This time we both yelled at him to get out and stay out. Again, he left without a word. Well, the next day, we decided to report it to the front desk. I mean, you don't want to get an employee in trouble, but we weren't even sure if he worked there. The uniform was odd looking. Anyway, when we told the front desk clerk, his reply chilled me to the bone. I'm sorry, sir. That's not possible. The adjoining door in your room was bolted shut years ago and can't be opened. Plus, that room was vacant last night. There you go. Wow. Um, so I want to send a thank you to Emily Holland, who published a version of the story that I just read um, on patch.com in 2019. I will absolutely link to it in the show notes. Um, she says this story happened to her parents on July 20th, 1991. So Emily's parents are Marcus and Tanya. Well, I mean, I gave them names. I oh, no okay. <laughs> I, oh. Don't know, I don't know what their so real how much, names are. How much did you make up of this story? Uh, I just, it's a fictionalized version of the account. So you made gave. up every single thing? No. Okay. No, this is what they <laughs> they claim happened to them. All right. Well, um, you know what? After that, we should probably take a break and then compose ourselves and then do the history like we always do. Let's do it. All right. Hey, guys. What I've learned over the last couple of years is the key to a really good podcast is two things getting plenty of Apple podcast reviews, and lots of caffeine. You can help us with both of those. Head over to Apple Podcast, write us a review, and if you feel up to it, you could even buy us a cup of coffee. You can go to buymeacoffee.com slash ghostlypodcast, or just go to ghostlypodcast.com and click on the Buy Us Coffee. You can sign up for a membership or a one-time donation to us. It would really be appreciated. Pets, facts from a skeptic point of view. Pets, facts. He presents it all to you. All right, Rebecca, you ready for some hashtag Pat Facts? Pat Facts! <laughs> uh, okay, well, before we begin, I know that we advertised that this was going to be the HMS Queen Mary. And we're kind of talking about the RMS Queen Mary. So the difference between HMS and RMS is that the HMS is reserved for ships that serve in the British Royal Navy called Her Majesty's Ship. So HMS, Her Majesty's Ship. 
while RMS is a ship designated to carry royal postal mail across the Atlantic to America. So RMS, Royal Mail Ship. But ships can be both of those things, though, too. So the Queen Mary served as both during its day, and we're going to talk about that as we go. Yeah, absolutely. And I will say, you know, sometimes when you're doing the research for the paranormal stuff, you'll you'll Sometimes people get a little confused because there was like an older version of an HMS Queen Mary that anyways, it's not worth getting into. But just, you know, we're talking about we're talking about the the one that, as I mentioned, is in California, which actually it's kind of funny because the older Queen Mary, they forced it to be called the Queen Mary, Two. Even though it was the first one. Even though it was the first one, <laughs> yes. But at some point, they forced that. Yeah. Well, and that's the one that sunk. This yeah. is not the one that sunk. <laughs> but this is also because um, the ships are involved with the Navy in some kind of way. Mm -hmm. Even the ones that carry the postal stuff are right. still part of. So they can do stuff like that. If it was privately owned, that would be very difficult to do. That's true. Okay. So Britain was falling behind in its shipbuilding in the 1920s. Germany had kind of taken over as the major shipbuilding country in those days with the launch of the Bremen and the Europia. Britain was determined to take back its lead in the shipbuilding race. So White Star, you might remember White Star because that was in the Titanic episode. Absolutely. Uh, so they began construction on an 80,000-ton ship named the Oceanic in 1928. But at the same time, another shipbuilding company named Canard planned a 75,000-ton uh, ship of their own. So Canard got started first, and the ship was known only as hole number 534. And they began actually constructing the ship in December of 1930 on the River Clyde in Scotland. You've been to Scotland, Rebecca, right? I have been to Scotland. Have you been to the River Clyde? No, I don't think so. Have you been there? I have been to Scotland, but I have not been to the River Clyde either. But that's where they do a lot of shipbuilding, though. Okay. Yeah, or they did at least. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, the timing was really bad because that's when the Great Depression hit the UK. So Kennard applied for a loan to complete 534. Not only were they approved for this loan, but the loan was big enough for them to actually make two ships. And these two ships would um, sail back and forth from um, South Southampton mm -hmm. to New York. Okay. So... Um, there was a small condition, though, in this. Mm. The condition of the loan was that Cunard would have to merge with White Star because they were both making ships at that time, and White Star hadn't started on theirs yet. Oh. So, but the problem was they were the biggest rivals of the day. Uh, White Star was forced to cancel construction on the Oceanic. Um, which probably would have been great and probably we would have been doing an episode on that as well because it would have probably been haunted. <laughs> that could be. <laughs> no, that's kind of crazy. I can't imagine, I mean, like two big uh, two big rival companies, but the, the government forcing them yeah. to like, nope, sorry, American and United Airlines. If you, you want this need... loan, you're right, going to have to do you just that. have to merge. Yeah, I mean, could you imagine if Verizon and AT&T had to merge or... Microsoft and Apple were forced to merge. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. That, that would, would be, be one weird computer. I can say that. Wow. N okay. Well, anyways, you're, I'm going to let you keep going with the history, but that's, that's just super interesting. Right? So the merger took a while to work out the details, but they both agreed, even though they didn't want to, uh, to those terms. And the merger was finalized on May 10th, 1934. They finished the Queen Mary, and her first launch was on September 26th, 1934. It cost 3.5 million pounds. Now, to put that into perspective, that would have been 17.5 million US dollars. And then if we try to figure out what the equivalent is to this day, it would be 340 million dollars. Wow. Yeah, so that cost a lot. A so lot. that was a big loan from the government. Um, but before it could be launched, the River Clyde had to actually be deepened 
to cope with the massive size of Queen Mary. Wow. So could you imagine that? They built the ship, but it couldn't even leave because the River Clyde wasn't big enough. That's, that's add more money. Exactly, right? Um, so the ship was named after Mary of Tech, consort of King George V. Until her launch, the name was kept a closely guarded secret. Legend has it, and this is legend though, but it's kind of an interesting legend, that Cunard intended to name the ship Victoria, in keeping with company tradition of giving its ships names ending in IA. They like that, I guess. But when company representatives asked the king's permission to name the ocean liner after Britain's greatest queen, he said his wife, Mary of Tech, would be delighted. <laughs> and so the legend goes, the delegation had, of course, no other choice but to report that number 534 would be called Queen Mary. That's really funny. So what was considered her maiden voyage was from Southampton on May 27th, 1936, and Queen Mary sailed at high speeds for most of her maiden voyage to New York until heavy fog forced a reduction of speed on the final day of the crossing, arriving in New York Harbor on June 1st, 1936. Uh, no icebergs? No icebergs, no. Okay, yeah. yay! <laughs> in fact, let me just, a spoiler alert, the Queen Mary is still in existence today. No icebergs. It never capsized, although there was one time it almost capsized. Okay. But it never did. So among the facilities available on board Queen Mary, the liner featured two indoor swimming pools. Wow. Yeah. It had a beauty salon, had libraries and children nurseries for all three classes, a music studio and lecture hall, telephone connectivity to anywhere in the world, outdoor paddle tennis courts, and dog kennels. I, you know, I don't think we mentioned this in the Titanic episode. The Titanic also had dog kennels. Oh, okay. There and were 12 dogs aboard the Titanic. Wow. Now, this is- Three of them were rescued. Really? Yeah. That's so much better than I thought it was going to be. Yes, it is. But that means that they these dogs took the place of people. Well, you know? I suppose that's so. true. Now, by the way, Titanic obviously is before this, right? Yes. In my history, just making sure I'm yes. placing myself in history. Okay. So the largest room on board the Queen Mary was cabin class, first class, their main dining room or grand salon, depending upon what time of day it was, I think. Of course. Uh, spanning three stories in height and anchored by wide columns, the ship had many air-conditioned public rooms on board, which was Very a novelty fancy. for the day, right? Yeah. Uh, the cabin class swimming pool facility spanned over two decks in height. This was the first ocean liner to be equipped with their own Jewish prayer room and part of a policy to show that British shipping lines avoided the anti-Semitism evident at the time in Nazi Germany. Yeah, right. 1934. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. So you're thinking this is really close to World War II, right? Mm -hmm. Well, World War II happens during this. <laughs> and um, during World War II... The Queen Mary was converted into a troop ship and ferried Allied soldiers. And at the time, they repainted the ship's hull and the uh, superstructure and funnels to navy gray, which gave her the nickname of the Gray Ghost. Gray Ghost. And probably where ghost stories started. Sliding through the water. The Gray Ghost. soldiers. Okay. Sorry. Just, <laughs> I, can, I can hear the commercial. Oh, okay. You're going to make a commercial for the Queen Mary? <laughs> the Grey Ghost. <laughs> okay. Uh, Queen Mary entered the record books in July 1943 as she carried 15,470 soldiers and 943 crew members, making it the record for the most passengers ever transported on one vessel. This was possible because it was summer and some passengers had to sleep on the deck. Okay, okay. I saw a picture while I was researching, mm -hmm. and I could not believe how many that was, humans were that was crammed this day. onto yes. this ship. Yes. Now, here's the thing, too. Um, you know, going from uh, England to America on the ocean, it can get very cold, mm. even in the summer months. 
But that was the only time they could do it because these people would have froze to death had it been winter. Wow. Yeah, they couldn't have had that many people just like out and exposed to the elements yeah. on, on the deck, on the upper deck. Wow. Yeah. Crazy. Here is a little known fact, too. Uh, during the war, Queen Mary carried British Prime Minister Winston Churchill across the Atlantic for meetings with fellow Allied forces officials on several occasions. He was listed on the passenger manifest as Colonel Warden. That <laughs> sounds like it's like almost like those like two first name things, yeah. but it's like two titles. I'm Colonel Warden. Yeah. I'm I, you know, prison guard. Uh, Baker. Like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like nice, nice. Uh, in 1946, the Queen Mary made her fastest ever time from New York to Southampton. It took three days, 22 hours and 42 minutes, which was extremely fast for those days. Okay. All right. Could you imagine taking that long to get someplace? Yeah. No, so, we don't uh, have to worry about that now. Yeah, but if you were doing that, you would have to plan like a month-long, vac- you know. Yeah, you're not taking a th- three to four-day no. trip to get there and then three to four days to get back. For to like two days. only spend two yeah. days there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's what kind of was its downfall, though. Mm. In 1958, the first transatlantic flight by a jet aircraft made it from New York to London in guess how much time? Three hours. No. <laughs> the Concorde might have done yeah, that, Yeah, no, the right? Concorde. Yeah, no, I guess that's true. Right? Isn't it like six hours, seven hours? It was something? seven to eight hours. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, after this, the demand for sea crossing of the ocean fell away markedly. On some voyages, winters especially, Queen Mary sailed into harbor with more crew than passengers. Wow. I mean, I wonder, I mean, I'm guessing it was not significantly cheaper. You know what I mean? Like, because if it was, then you'd think you'd still get some No, you'd have to pay for more employees. There was, you know, there was food involved. There were several meals. No, it wasn't cheaper. And it took a lot more time. And it was a lot more dangerous. And it was freezing cold. Yeah. So, yeah. But in a plane, you wouldn't feel that cold. No, no. And it's like, what, maybe like one or two meals. You exactly. Know? Yeah. yeah. So Cunard couldn't keep putting money into the Queen Mary and also make new improved ships. So they decided to sell the Queen Mary. So they got many offers. And uh, the one that won out was from Long Beach, California for $3.45 million. Okay. So they lost a lot of money in this deal. Yeah, right? I mean, think of how much it cost to build. Yeah. um, But California beat the Japanese scrap merchants because they were just going to scrap this thing. Oh, okay. So that's why it's still around. Yeah. So that's why they have it in Long Beach. So this is also another interesting fact. Queen Mary was featured in the film Assault on a Queen that was in 1966 starring Frank Sinatra. Wow. Old Blue Eyes. Old Blue Eyes. Yeah. Queen Mary was retired from service in 1967, and on September 27th, she completed her 1,000th and last crossing of the North Atlantic, having carried, get this, 2,112,000 passengers, and she carried them over 3,792,227 miles. Wow, did a lot of work. Yeah, absolutely. She was, you know, she definitely served her purpose in that time. After some renovation, it reopened its doors to tourists on May 8, 1971. And in 1972, Hyatt Hotels was brought in to manage its 400-room hotel, although it struggled financially. So it wasn't just like come here and like walk around it like it was a hotel. Like you it was everything. Stay there. Okay. And that, that was part of its problem. Mm. Is that it tried, and it still is, it tried to serve so many different things that it failed at all of them. And at that time in 1971 and 72, they had three different places running it. So they financially just lost. Wow. Yeah. But Disney had some interest in buying the Queen Mary. So they planned to include an attraction known as Disney Sea which would be a theme park celebrating the world's oceans. But all that fell through. Disney abandoned 
abandon its concept, although they did put a considerable amount of money into it. That would have been so cool <laughs> if they had done it. Yeah. But, well, actually, they kind of did, but they did it in Tokyo. Oh. They opened up Disney Sea in Tokyo. I see. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it closed its doors again in 1992 and then reopened again in 1993. Then it went bankrupt in 2005, or at least its holding company did. Uh, it's gone through a few other hands since then, and every new owner or operator would have concepts on how to make this ship that is harbored in Long Beach financially sound. In, in a uh, 2017 report on the ship's condition, the report noted that not only the hull, but also the supports for a raised exhibition area within the ship were corroding, and the ship's uh, deteriorating condition left areas such as the engine room vulnerable to flooding. So repairs were estimated at close to $300 million. Wow. They never did all those repairs. Oh. So what they, what they decided to do was to um, pump $23 million into it and try to get like, like the $300 million would be all the repairs. Okay. They tried to do just the essential ones, mm. but they still missed out. <laughs> they still didn't finish all those. So we're not sure what's going to happen to the Queen Mary nowadays. Uh, as it's still in need of several repairs in 2021, they, they need at least another $23 million uh, in, in repairs. Um, but the company that was running it filed for bankruptcy in 2021. Well, and I'm guessing last year didn't help. No, I'm sure it definitely didn't. Yeah. So that's what I have for the history of the Queen Mary. Do you have anything to add? Uh, I mean, I do, but I think I'll save it for our debate because there's a there's a lot of stories that go along with the ghost sightings. Yeah, one of one of the stories uh, I would like to talk about though is during World War II mm. that um it the the Queen Mary was on course and another ship was on course and they were ordered not to stop and the Queen Mary hit this other ship. And this other ship was a lot smaller, and it broke it in half. And a lot of passengers of that ship then were in the ocean, right? Mm -hmm. So there is a report that um, the Queen Mary was told absolutely do not stop, and they kept going. And out of the 388 passengers on the ship, they only found 90 of them at one point. So this would be like the big mass casualty that I was waiting for with this Queen Mary. But another report says that, no, 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 they told the destroyers, which were ships around them, to go pick up the passengers, and they did. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how many people died in that. Yeah, I don't know. And, and again, they weren't on the Queen Mary, the yeah. ones that died. You know, I mean, like the Queen Mary was able to keep sailing. I mean, it was really big and this was a really small ship. So, I mean, they destroyed the other ship. Yeah. But how many people died? I don't know. But I still wanted there to be some kind of mash castle. I mean, I didn't want, <laughs> but like I was expecting to. Sure. Well, what I know. found interesting about that story when I was reading it too, is that they serpentined. And that just always makes me think of Game of Thrones. <laughs> it was ah. like serpentine, um, but yeah, they uh, you know they would they would travel in packs, yes. because you know the and they would zigzag submarine, and they would zigzag so the yeah. submarines couldn't get them. I mean, come on. Well, it wasn't that submarines couldn't get them; the submarines would become very confused. Well, I used to say to help prevent yeah. submarines from. If getting you think them. of the game Battleship, yes. and you're trying to sink another person's battleship, and you call out Q four. And you know that it should be there, but no, it just moved because it zigzagged. Right. So that's the reason why the submarines would would have issue with it. Yeah, it, it, that was because of was... the game Battleship. It, <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So I think we should take one more break, and then we will come back with the debate. Let's do it. Hey listeners, did you know there's a way to share with the world whether you're hashtag team believer or hashtag team skeptic, or for those who need it, hashtag team the middle? It's our store called Ghostly Gear. Yep, and we even have custom ghostly designs like microclimate or 
even the Easter Island Massacre or of the Ghostly Logo. Just visit our Ghostly Gear store right on ghostlypodcast.com to order your T-shirt, hoodie, mug, mask, whatever. <laughs> okay, okay. I think we got it. Um, they just need to visit ghostlypodcast.com and click on Ghostly Gear to order right on the website and send us any ideas that you have for new merch. Exactly. Order your merch today and send us a pic of you in your ghostly gear. back for the debate all right you ready i am ready i you know what i am more ready than ever more ready than ever than ever for this one wow yes all right okay okay so there are as i mentioned earlier so many ghost stories and investigations Mm -hmm. i will link to them in the show notes i'm only going to be covering a fraction of them today Uh, There are so many famous stories that I can't even cover all of the like big stories. Mm. Uh, We just don't have time for it. And then there are countless reports of paranormal activity, EVPs, photos, all sorts of stuff. And, you know, I'm I'm just I'm going with a a few key things today. Uh, But please, if you are interested in this, check out the show notes. So many amazing things out there. Okay. And only you can decide if these uh, famous stories and paranormal reports are, are not uh, real. Connected. Not real. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So the first one I want to talk about is one that, of course, we have to do, even if it's not necessarily the biggest one, but uh, it's the lady in white. Oh, she got on there too? Uh, of course. Or maybe, the white lady. Maybe there's only one woman in white. And she travels (laughs) to different places for different haunts. Hmm. Well, ghosts and workers alike have reported sightings of the white lady, a woman floating at the end of the first class lounge or the queen's salon, uh, dressed in a ghostly white evening gown for more than half a century. Um, So spook hunter, ghost hunter Valentina Lomberg um, is convinced that she took a picture of the lady in white. Hmm. Um, so Dane Valentina, who was a former model, uh, checked into the floating hotel to search for the ship's ghosts. She was stunned by what she discovered. What did she discover? Well, while on board, the glamorous ghost hunter felt compelled to start taking photographs. Uh, when she later studied her photos, she spotted the ghostly figure standing in a doorway, which, of course, I will put this picture in the show notes. Uh, Valentina said she wasn't visible to the naked eye. It was only when I got home and looked at the photos that I saw it. It could only be the lady in white. She's often seen by workers. But as far as I'm aware, nobody's captured her on camera in this kind of detail. Interesting. Uh, what do you think of the picture? I am not sure. I mean, it's 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 actually so clearly a woman in white. <laughs> that well, I don't I'm know if it's a woman. Sure. It's it's clearly a figure a in figure, white. A figure, a figure. But it looks like a period. KKK member or something. No, I no no no. I can see the hat, like the ruffled ruffled shirt or dress. Like I mean, it, it looks like somebody put like a white bag on their on their head. <laughs> <laughs> like in the picture, like that's what I'm picturing. That's what I'm getting from well, that picture. It's, you know, a ghost, ghostly figure. I and don't know. What website did you find that on? That's a great question. That I, I already know what it is. Okay, thank you. It's the haunted ear, the ghost videos, which is, this is not spelt exactly as as it is, and I'm probably not saying it. Maybe it's, no, it's Haunted Earth Ghost Videos. Yes, that's it. Haunted Earth, yeah. Dot blogspot.com. Yes. All right. But 
if you look down at the bottom of where you you sent me this ahead I did. of time. Yes, I did. One time I get the evidence ahead of time. Uh, I always send it to <laughs> you. You just don't always choose to look so at it. So I scrolled to the bottom of it and I was reading it. And on the bottom, it says, my view. Now, the source for this is the sun. Yes. Okay. Like the newspaper. Yeah. And it says, my view, the sun, a British lowbrow newspaper has been sharing hoax ghost photographies for some time. Some were obvious ghost capture app creations or Photoshop fakes, all verifiable. Regardless of whether or not they are aware, I personally would treat this photograph with caution as the credibility of the taker and circumstances cannot be verified. Mm. So what do you think of that, Rebecca? I mean, I, you know, that's always a question. Always a question. Uh, you know, I mean, again, it's multiple people have reported um, seeing her. I picked this evidence because it is the only photograph that I could find of her. Um, there are other ghostly photos taken um, at the ship, but that this is the only one of the uh, lady in white. The alleged lady <laughs> in white. I mean, I don't know. To me, it looks really pretty creepy. Um, but it, it looks like it, it's just like from a 70s horror film or something <laughs> like that. It, like, I don't know. It does not. It does not look realistic to me at all. It looks like somebody wearing like, I don't know, like a robe of white with a bag over their head that's also white. <laughs> that's what it looks like to me. I, I looked at that picture for a long time and I couldn't figure out what was bugging me so much about it until I thought of that. Gotcha. Yeah, I don't know. To me, it wasn't it wasn't quite that um, dramatic. But uh, to me, I thought it was po it's possible. It's possible. But I'm also a little bit skeptical just because of who took it. Um, so, you know, yeah. So what would you uh, give it? Number a zero. Wise? A zero. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm going to give it a six. A six? A six for really? this one. Yeah. Again, an, it's not just the photo for me. It's also about the, you know, the multiple people that have claimed to see her. Um, and I don't know. You but know, the evidence that you, that you presented to me was the photograph. Yeah. I mean, and I'm, I don't know. So I'm what would you give the curious. photograph? All right, maybe the photo gets a four. A four. Wow. Yeah. That surprises me. I would give it even lower. I mean, but <laughs> if I mean if I can go below zero on this one, wow. I will. Wow. Okay. Just because of just the source of it and just I don't know. It it just yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Next. Next one. The next ghost I want to talk about is John Petter. John Petter. Yes. Okay. So he is said to haunt the boiler area, specifically hatch door number 13, mm. also known as Shaft Alley. Okay. All right. So warning for gruesomeness, everybody, on this particular story. So one night in 1966, the watertight doors in the engine and boiler rooms were ordered to be closed. About five minutes later, an 18-year-old crew member from Yorkshire was found crushed in the door of hatch number 13, trapped with his arms pinned to his side. While the man was freed and carried to the hospital ward, it was too late. He showed signs of crushing injury on his arms, chest, and pelvis and was bleeding from his nose. He was injected with morphine but died shortly after. So his ghost is regularly seen around the area now with people reporting the sound of someone running behind them and whistling. Others, ha is it you, Pat? Yeah, that was me whistling <laughs> behind them. Yep. You're the whistler. I am the whistler. Um, others, have no <laughs> others have noticed that spots of grease that look like fingerprints have appeared on their faces. Some have seen the figure of a bearded man in blue coveralls that looks just like the man who died out of the corner of their eyes. And several others have said they've seen an engineer wandering the hallways asking if guests have seen his wrench. But when they went back to find him, he had disappeared. So, like, again, lots of different claims. But here's mm -hmm. a specific one. Right. So this is from the Unsolved Mysteries fandom website. Oh, I didn't know there was one. <laughs> I guess so. Okay. Uh, all right. So, quote, I was working in the capacity of a lead guide, which meant my class was to close down the tour route and make sure there wasn't any stragglers behind. Nancy Ann recalls, I don't know why I turned around 
spot, I turned around and standing right behind me on the step was a man. He had on blue overalls and they were dirty. When I stepped aside to let him go by, he wasn't there. He was gone. I don't necessarily believe any other ghost stories that other people have come up with. I only know what I saw and I only believe what I saw with my own eyes. Interesting. Um, All right. So there's some red flags when we talk about the Queen Mary. And one of them is that uh, it was it was a ship that was in motion a lot, right? And they say that even now, when you get on the ship, it feels like you're in motion all the time. Uh, so it's you know that that might be something that would lead someone to think that there's something going on there, something haunted ish. But it's just the way that the thing was constructed, and so it's kind of a red flag ish thing for me. But another thing is that, so they took this ship that was supposed to be moving and they docked it. And they docked it and wanted to sell people on the idea of having this tourist area on this ship. The only problem is they removed a lot of the historical items from the ship itself. So when you go on there, there is no actual history tour. I don't know if you knew this. There's a Golden Ages tour, but this Golden Ages tour is pretty much whatever the tour guide wants to say. You know, it's kind of like a random thing. Sometimes it's a reenactment of an event or something like that. It's not really historic. They don't have any, it's not like a history museum. So it's gone bankrupt several times in its, since the 1960s. And because of that, one of the areas that they found that actually um, people are willing to pay money for is for the ghost tours. And I believe that these ghost tours were made up just so that they could actually stay afloat <laughs> in both ways, pun, in- pun, pun intended. <laughs> pun intended on that one. Yeah. Um, you know, so I really believe that this place makes money on these stories um, directly. And I believe that they would not be in existence today if not for those stories. So that's a big red flag for me on that. You know, it's telling me that maybe there's not all of this ghost stuff going on, that it's all made up. (laughs) So that's where I get on that. Um, I'm not going to believe some kind of fandom site. Um, Bearded man in the 60s, that's pretty, pretty common. And to this day, you know, I'm a bearded man. If I wore coveralls on there and I went around asking for a wrench, I bet people would believe I was a ghost. Well, especially if you just disappeared. Yeah. And like they didn't see where you went. No, that's that's all in your head. (laughs) So that's where I'm at with this one is that I believe that all of these stories are made up to some degree. Mm. And some of them can be proven to be made up too, just so you know. Okay. This one, I don't, I didn't really read much about it, so I don't know much about it. But I do know that given the idea that they are making most of their profits based upon the idea that this is haunted and that they would be shut down if not, I don't know. I I don't believe it. <laughs> well, I think it's very um, suspicious and almost cursed, like that they keep going bankrupt. That seems very. Why would odd there be a me. curse on this? I don't even. There was know. no mass casualties. Yes, this person. I did read reports that this person did die. Um, so that person is legit. But, I mean, people die sometimes on on these kind of things, and. and and in construction and stuff. And they were also shutting, uh, they actually, um, they actually like walled off that whole area. And it was rediscovered when they were doing renovations on a bathroom Mm -hmm. that, that this area even existed. They forgot it existed for 20 years. Oh yeah. I mean, so just imagine the spirit builds up in there. Okay. There's one more thing I'd like to say. Okay. So, if you were in business, how, so I said it would cost $300 million to get this to the point where it was, you know, in its heyday, right? 
$23 million just to get it fully functional to this day. And that is only if you want to treat it as a historical area. If you want to treat it as a ghost area, you can have it as, as you know, uh, I don't, don't know what the word I'm looking for, as like messed up. Touristy. No, I mean like, like ranchacked. Oh, right. Like it could be dark and dingy yeah. and that kind of stuff. You could do all that for the ghost stuff. It's cheaper to actually have it be for ghost stories and not for haunted or not for history stuff. Well, I mean, I guess I'll say this. If I own a own a place and every place has its assets, right? And it's, uh, you know, things, uh, geez, it's been a while since I've worked in business, everybody. Um, but yeah, or, you know, Japan, things that aren't as great, right? Um, and uh, so if one of the assets of it is that it has a lot of, I mean, people experience a lot of creepy stuff on it. I mean, you you know, whenever paranormal investigators come, a lot of times they find things. Um, people keep reporting stuff happening. Then, and that, and they seem to, and then all of a sudden they tell their friends, things keep going. People keep showing up at my door. They're like, can I stay in the haunted room? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna capitalize on that. Yeah, but doesn't what com- mean it's not true. What comes first, though, the ghost story or the ghost sightings? I don't know. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is uh, that I believe the ghost stories came first, and therefore all these people are now boarding this with expectations of seeing ghosts. And when you have those expectations, you're gonna see something that's gonna make you think that weird things are gonna happen. Weird things always happen, but they're not always attributed to ghosts. <laughs> All right. Well, there's lots of things. Uh, I will say again, this one to me, this was a real guy. He died a violent death. Doesn't surprise me that he's hanging around. Okay. So, uh, so my 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 rating of uh, of ha- hatch thirteen um, is a is an uh, an eight. Uh, my rating is I'm going to give it a one. <laughs> that is it. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Okay. All right. All next. Right, next one. Uh, in 1966, a woman staying in, um, oh, sorry. So this is room, um, the state room B340. Okay. It would help if I started with that. <laughs> Some of that got deleted on my script there. Um, so state room B340, um, is supposed to be the most haunted room in the whole place, mm. right? Um, so in 1966, a woman staying in the room reported that she was woken up with the bed covers were ripped off of her and she saw a man at the foot of the bed. Um, then she rang for the steward, but apparently he vanished. So that was kind of the start of like the story of this room. Um, years later, guests staying in the room have reported hearing someone knocking on the door in the middle of the night, seeing bathroom lights mysteriously turn on. Um, even the hotel's maid started complaining, they would find the bathroom water running, even when no one had stayed in the room for days. And one reported that the bed covers were pulled off right after she put them on. So these are just kind of like those general stories, right? That people tell. So I think it's kind of interesting, though. Um, so I'm going to tell a specific story of a woman. I'm sorry, uh, who stayed there. I'm going to just move things around a little bit. Uh, I'm going to tell the story of a woman who stayed there, Julie Tremaine. And she stayed there with a bunch of um, investigators. Now, they left, right? The Like, she stayed in the room by herself. But earlier in the evening, there were a bunch of investigators with her. Um, so, uh, anyways, but the next day after she stayed in the room and she didn't, she says like, she thought she like heard people, but like a lot of times that room, like people come and knock on it and run away. And so she said she, like during the night, she did not herself experience anything specifically. Right. Okay. Okay. But the next day she looked through the SLS footage taken during the investigation now, the SLS camera, and I think we've seen one of these, is the structured light sensor mm-hmm. perceives um, and spatially locates energy that isn't visible to the naked eye. So I think it's like that stick figure. Yeah, it's like the connect on the old Xboxes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So she had been sitting in the corner of B340 all through the investigations the day before um, on the side of the bed next to the wall. There was no one next to her all night. No one that she it was human. Um, she never budged from the spot. 
So as she's watching this footage, imagine her surprise, she says, when she saw a creepy spectral stick figure looming next to her on the camera. And she went back to her audio notes and she heard the same EVP responses on her file that the paranormal investigators also claimed to see. Um, they asked this one spirit if he had a name and uh, they had to ask him a couple of times. And finally, he was like, Hassel. Um, and Hassel off? <laughs> just Hassel. Um, wow. And she claimed it was even louder and clearer on it's her the own. <laughs> Is that his name? The Hass, right? <laughs> the was Hoff. he eating bur- The Hoff. Uh, yeah, no. was he eating burgers? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh anyways um but yeah so she could really hear it on her audio because it was basically this figure that was right next to her okay so that's the story right All right but then do you want to do you want to talk about well i want to the I, there's a couple of things that yeah, we're gonna miss the, if i don't yeah get yeah into jump it in now. jump in in 1966 it was not open as a hotel that wasn't even a thing then it wasn't open until 1972 as a hotel. In 71, they started to allow people to stay there. They had 125 rooms of the 400 ready. Mm. So at this point, 1966, it was nothing. Okay. It was just sitting there um, until 1967 when it did its um, last voyage. But that was even after it had been decommissioned. So... It was only because they wanted to make this a big publicity so was it thing. Still, to do... like active as a luxury no, liner in '66. No. Nope. Okay. So somebody might have stayed there, though. You don't know. Well, but no, they didn't. <laughs> no, they didn't. <laughs> no, I don't. Um, they may have the year wrong. I have no idea. Also, too, is this the same um, state rooms that Disney was involved with? Yes, I wanted to talk about this. Yeah. So Disney wanted to make this into a cruise ship version of the Haunted Mansion, right? Yes. So they wanted to make this all seem haunted. Absolutely. So that's the thing. So she, this woman in her blog post, like totally says that, right? Like she says, that was the room that they tried to create this version. They had faces behind the mirrors, false flat floorboards, faucets wired to go on when no one was in the room. Jeez. Yeah. When the experiment didn't make enough money though, so supposedly they like left propri- they locked proprietary technology in the room, which that doesn't seem like very Disney to me. Like, I don't know why they leave stuff behind, but whatever. Maybe it was cheaper than taking it with them. But supposedly it was just like sealed off. But like the stuff would go on. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like people would claim to hear these things, yeah. but it was just like the stuff that Disney left behind. But yeah. the theory of Greg Newkirk, who was one of the paranormal investigators mm-hmm. that was with her, is that, you know, okay, maybe we have no idea if any of these murders or deaths or things that people will claim happened in that room happened. We have zero evidence of any of it. But because people go to this room looking for ghosts, because Disney did all this stuff and made it seem paranormal, it's attracting a lot of paranormal activity on the show. Oh, yeah. Okay, because Disney. Disney always attracts paranormal activity. <laughs> okay, but also, I wanted to talk about the SLS cameras, right? Yes. Okay. Now, when we were at the event that we that we saw these at, uh, that was um, that was the hands-on paranormal event, right, right? In the church, yeah. Yeah. Um, so she used a Connect from an Xbox to to camera to make this camera work and it uses the same technology as that which that camera is specifically designed to find humans and to um and to map them out mm-hmm. right so it's constantly searching constantly searching for what can be considered a human figure and if it sees like two points, like what it appears to be an arm and what appears to be a head, it will draw the rest in and it will make the stick figure. So the stick figure thing is nothing. <laughs> that is nothing at all. That is just doing what the technology is supposed to do, which is make a human and map it out. Because remember, Connect used to have those things where you could uh, control it just with your hands and stuff. Oh, right? I used to do that. Yeah, but that's... But, but it's not very good. <laughs> no. And neither are the stick figures. If you've ever seen them with the dancing, they're always dancing. 
okay? <laughs> because because they're moving from like one spot to another spot just continuously. And and the, it doesn't know how to map it then. So it just maps the in-betweens as, and it looks like dance moves. <laughs> All right. So I don't buy any of that. The audio, I have no idea, but- Given I couldn't everything find a recording else, of it, so yeah. But given everything else, that this could be just the story. This this evidence could be trampled on with everything else that Disney was part of it, and they <laughs> wanted to make a haunted mansion that nobody could have been staying there in 1966 because it wasn't even a thing at that time. I I just yeah no. <laughs> yeah, no. All right, so what's your, so your rating is a zero? It's a zero. All right, all right. I, you know what? I am actually going to give this one a four. Oh, wow. Which for me is very, very low. I'm going to be honest because the Disney thing, I mean, I get it, but yeah. Yeah, I, I just, this just is unbelievable. <laughs> all right, Rebecca, what else you got? Okay, so I, I have to talk about Jackie. Um, Jackie is probably the most beloved spirit on the ship. Mm -hmm. Um, Jackie is the spirit of a young girl who's about five or six years of age. Um, and I, I'm not going to go into the whole story, but basically Peter James is a investigator and he was investigating in 1991, um, in the Royal theater with the film crew. And he basically communicated with a girl named a little girl named Jackie. Yeah. And, um, basically they, they talked to her in, um, both the, the Royal Theater, which used to be the second class pool and in the first class pool, which was not used at that time. Um, over the years, a lot of people have tried to communicate and have communicated supposedly with Jackie. Supposedly, she's very playful, likes to talk to people. She'll play peekaboo um, with people. Um, but uh, here is the specific story that that I'll share with you. Um, this is on Ranker. Uh, we came into the pool and I heard giggling the sound of a little girl playing in the area. And at that point, I noticed there was splashing. This is Kathy Love, a maintenance supervisor on the ship. The splashing stopped, the giggling continued, and we observed the wet footprints of a small child walking across into the locker room. I know that's what I saw. I'm not sure exactly why I saw it, but I know it was there. So I don't know for sure that it was Jackie, but since people claim Jackie is a little girl spirit ghost that's in the pool area, I'm connecting the two. Okay. There was no Jackie ever in the pool that died. Okay, but mm -hmm. there's a lot more to this, though. Okay. Because this story has changed several times, to that there was two little girls that drowned in the pool, to it even goes, like, really far in another direction that says that these two girls or one girl, the story changes several times, got murdered was mm -hmm. murdered on yeah. the boat. Um, so, like, the actual concept of this girl, there was no little girl that drowned in the pool. There was no two girls that drowned in the pool. That would have been a major thing that would have been all over the place, and there's no evidence of this at all, that, this, that there was a Jackie that drowned in the pool, that there was a little girl that drowned in the pool, that there were two little girls that drowned in the pool, or that there was girls that got murdered. <laughs> I agree. I mean, I, I also read that as well. There's no, um, again, uh, you know, unlike the previous story where we knew we know there was a guy and that's how he died and all of that. Um, you know, we don't know um, exactly where Jackie comes from. Again, I, I just think spirits are drawn to this place. Um, because of Disney. <laughs> not just because of Disney, but <laughs> but just in general, um, and and you know, and again, I've I've also heard that it was a, it's adult women. I mean, you know, but the story changes so many, so many times that it's like I I don't find credibility in the story that changes all the time. My job as a skeptic is not to totally rule out every single possibility. I just don't think that there's been any proof of any ghost yet, and this is one of those times where I'm just like. I don't know. There's just too much other stuff happening and we'd have to really tear apart every single story. Mm -hmm. But the idea that there was no Jackie, there was no person that drowned in the pool, little girl. And there's just so many different things. And also, as you had said, the second class pool is no longer even there. Right. They removed the whole second class um, pool. 
Yes. So it's like, I don't know. There's just so much wrong with this story. Again, I, you know, I, I pulled, you know, Kathy's story because it's very representative of people who have heard splashing, have heard giggling, have felt um, a little girl's hands on them, um, seen wet footprints. Um, again, multiple people over the years have claimed these things. Again, is it Jackie? No, yeah, that was one guy. He was he was the source of the Jackie rumor. So whether yeah. we believe him or not, I'm not sure. Also, uh, the ship didn't carry many um, children passengers. I mean, there was some, but they were all accounted for. And the reason being is because it costs so much money that a child passenger would have just like unless they were actually moving. They probably wouldn't bring a child with. Mm, that's but then true. again, that's a lot of money to pay for a kid. But then again, it's going to be a month long thing. You know, they're going to be staying. But I, I don't know. But there wasn't many children actually aboard the ch- the ship. Mm-hmm. So, all right, I, so I'm going to have to go zero on going this one. Zero again. on this one. All right, I'm going six on this one. Six. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, so do you have one more? I got one more for one us. More. We okay. got to talk about- I know there's a lot more. Oh, I know. There's so many more, but I'm I'm picking the best for you okay. here. Okay. All right. Uh, so on uh, uh, September 18th, 1949, second senior staff officer, William E. Stark, was on the hunt for like, some gin. Like Tony Stark? <laughs> is, this, is this Iron Man? No, no. This is William E. Stark. Oh, okay. Um. So, okay, all right. You know, actually, I'm going to read, if you don't mind, I'm so sorry, but I just love this and I, I, I want to give it um, give it some uh, some more information. So this is from thededhistory.com. You guys should check this out. Uh, he's got a podcast. He's got lots of lots of stuff. I'm not sure if it's come out recently or not. But anyways, he's he, he decided to really look into the history of is there really a guy <laughs> named Officer Stark and how did he die? So basically, I mean, I know that there was a king in the north named Stark. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so the captain, Andrew M- M- McKellar, asked Officer Stark to go to the cabin of the staff captain and prepare some drinks for the captain himself and two other officers. Um, he asked him to make gin and limes. When Stark got to the cabin to make the dr- drinks, he couldn't find the gin. He asked the captain steward, Frederick Stokes, to help him. In the dimly lit cabin, the two men searched for the gin until finally Stokes found what he thought was a bottle of gin in one of the cupboards. He handed it off to Stark, who made the drinks. At 9.45 that evening, Captain McKellar saw Stark when he came to report um, after doing his rounds. At the coroner's inquest, Captain McKellar testified that Stark said, That was funny gin we had, sir, at dinner time." It was then that the captain realized that Stokes had mistakenly grabbed the old gin bottle that now held carbon tetrachloride, which was used to clean furniture. According to the captain, the actual (laughs) gin was kept in a separate cupboard along with glassware. In the dim light, Stokes did notice that the gin, the bottle he grabbed was dirty and wasn't the captain's gin. Wait, whoa, 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 okay. Why would they put gin in it? I mean, why would they put this cleaning solution in an old gin bottle? Well, I mean, whatever, whatever you got. Don't you ever put like old, I mean, stuff in old bottles? I mean, it's just. Uh, Actually, um, where I used to work, we were forced to label everything that we did. So if you put bleach in another container, you have to label it bleach. Yeah, well, that probably would be a good idea. Yeah, I, so <laughs> I I always label my stuff if I'm going to use a different container for it. That's that's a smart idea, and you're making me think about things. Okay, uh, the, the captain immediately notified the ship's doctor. Um, they had to come, you know, and get their their uh, stomach pumped. Right. Uh, he basically said he didn't think it was that big of a deal. He didn't get his stomach pumped and he actually went and actually had real gin and lime juice with the other people. Um, basically he laughed it off. Um, unfortunately, um, you know, there's lots of stories out there, but basically his, um, health started to decline. Um, and it took a few days or a week or so he was able to see and speak to his wife. And he was like, she was like, why didn't you get your stomach pumped? He's like, I don't know. I didn't think it was that bad. Um, and and he he died. Um, they said probably from like liver 
or kidney failure. Um, mm. You know, it's one of those things. Like, I guess the reports are always that he like drank the poison and like, uh, 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 and, like dies on the ship. Wait, can right you do away. that again? Uh, uh, uh. Wow. Those are the stories you usually hear. Um, but basically, he's this guy in his research. Like, you know, it looks like he died slowly. He did die on the ship. He was given a funeral, um, or he was uh, buried at sea, according to the the records. Um, so it sounds like he says that he still makes his rounds on the deck. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, he did die tragically. It just wasn't quite as violent, um, as what other people say. I mean, I will say I used to be hashtag team Stark. I I used to, (laughs) I mean, especially they, they went through a lot. I mean, the one got its head cut off. Then the other one wouldn't zigzag and got killed. The wife got her throat slit during a wedding of all places. I mean, there was a a lot of stuff. And then finally, one of them became king because he had the best stories. So I was actually thinking I used to be Team Stark until I became Team Captain America, you know, because there was like a civil war and like stuff happened and then. Yeah, so you were a Lannister. That's what you're saying. No, no. Oh my God, Rebecca. Okay, so, <laughs> um, okay, person died. Um, so person died, and then people claim to. I mean, he's just someone that they like. They see walking the deck. Or, how like, many claims around. have you seen of this? Again, countless. Countless. <laughs> <laughs> like I can't. Like you don't understand. Like Reddit and like all these websites are just like. Filled with people being like, yep, I was there, saw a weird thing, heard a weird noise, heard kids, you know, whatever, followed them, couldn't find it. Saw, saw somebody a with, with a, a glowing thing in his chest. <laughs> 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 okay, so um, I just, you know what? I don't see any videos. I haven't seen any pictures. I haven't seen any evidence that to me is more than just people just telling ghost stories. And Sometimes people tell ghost stories to freak people out. Sometimes they really believe these things, but they don't necessarily have, you know, science can usually beat these things. But I don't know the whole story. I The only story I know is of the guy dying, and I'm not going to argue that the guy died <laughs> um, because he was stupid and drank what he thought was gin. He didn't even smell it first or anything. I, well, I don't know if gin smells. I'm, like, not a, I'm not a gin drinker. It's got so. a lemony smell to it. Uh, well, yeah. furniture polish can sometimes have lemony yeah, smell. Yeah, that's what I was saying. That's why I said that. <laughs> so, no, I, I I don't have enough evidence on this one. All right, another zero? I'm going to give it a one a because one? I don't have enough evidence. Okay, all right. But if I did, I would probably be able to debunk all that evidence. Okay, I'm going to give this one a seven. Okay. Because, uh, again, real guy did die. I think it's one of those patterns, you know, where the people walk that path. Okay. Memory. All right, so what is your overall rating then? Okay, so overall, I'm going to give it... I am going to give it a seven. Uh, it's It's hard because... It, there's just, again, so many reports um, and so many ghost stories. And again, I didn't even, I'm so sorry, everyone, if I didn't get to your favorite ghost story from this ship. Um, so to me, it's uh, it's haunted. How about you? I'm going to, like, since we don't do, like, half points or anything like that, <laughs> okay. I'm going to give it a zero. Okay. You would give it a point five otherwise? I would give it a point five because I gave two ones and Three okay. zeros. So okay, um, maybe a point two five. Yeah, if I could give a point one five, I probably <laughs> would for this one. Okay. So that brings us to the closing arguments. This is our last chance to convince you to vote our way. We are each given one minute of uninterrupted time. We will time each other on our cell phones to keep each other honest, and that's especially for Rebecca. Hey. Because she tries to go over on her time. So I'm going to (laughs) really watch her this time. Mm. But are you ready, Rebecca? I am ready. Let's go. All right. So I believe that the Queen Mary is haunted. Uh, I mean, it ranks on every top 10 list anywhere you go. Again, as I said, so many stories, so many people have seen so many things. Um, and, And I guess the biggest thing is, you know, some of these stories that I've told you today, they are, you know, while there were no mass casualties on this ship, there were real people that really did die 
uh, you know, and in some of them in quite violent or scary ways. And so it is not surprising to me that there would be some of their spirits still on the ship and that those spirits might encourage other spirits. I mean, the reality is it's now been sitting in the same place for a long time and it, it you know, went through a lot and now it's been sitting there um, with already some spirits on it. Doesn't surprise me. Others are drawn there along with all of the investigators. Oh, Done. wow. You finished like five seconds early. Yeah. All right. I'm ready whenever you are. All right. Go. All right. Now, just because we want this to be haunted, just because it seems like it would be uh, a nice place to be haunted, it doesn't mean that it is. Unfortunately, there is cracks in every one of these stories. A lot of these people didn't exist that they say existed. Uh, they make an enormous amount of money, but not enough to stay afloat, as we kind of pun before, um, on ghost tours and they give ghost tours but they don't give history tours because they don't have as much of the history they have more cracks in the walls than anything else and the cracks in the walls don't need to be covered up because they're ghost stories so it's cheaper for them to keep it as a ghost place there's no truth to these stories at all these are all rubbish and i'm done Point one five possible <laughs> <laughs> all right so, so go vote everybody go vote right now ghostlypodcast.com slash polls absolutely so i want to thank you so much for listening please share us with your friends and family as word of mouth is what rebecca best advertisement absolutely so remember to hit that subscribe or follow button if you haven't done so yet if you're on YouTube, make sure that you smash that like smash button smash it, and hit subscribe and do all those <laughs> things and post a comment. We would love to see your comments. Love it. So, Rebecca, uh, my birthday's coming up. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, it's coming up right after the next episode. So how about this? How about you let me pick the next episode? Mm, I don't know. Just give me, what is it, carp, carp blanche? Carp blanche. All right, I guess so for your birthday. We could do that. All right. So for the next episode, and because it's going to be my birthday, I've decided that we should be talking about Robert the Doll. No. Oh, now, come on. <laughs> this is the one that you've been we afraid of. We have had this discussion. I have said not this no. episode. No, no, no. We're doing this episode. It is going to be my birthday. Come on. And so you pick literally the scariest, most like, oh my gosh, topic ever. You gave me carte blanche. <sighs> People. What, is, what does carte blanche mean? It means anything. Anything. Anything goes. No holds barred. All right. So. Um, Robert the doll. Please, Robert the doll, give us permission to do this episode. What if we say Robert the Doll three times fast? Does that mean I, he'll come to I, us? No, that's not. I know that's not a thing, but I just I want to do this do episode that. because it freaks you and Bob out so much. So much, people. And that'll be coming out on June 9th. Okay. You ready? No. <laughs> Are you going to be a little scared? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Going to be good. a lot scared. Good, good. It's my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> but until then, stay ghostly. Bye.